if you would bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for the total sufficiency of your Son and our Savior. We thank you for this sacred space called sanctuary that we've gathered even on a Saturday night for the express and sole intent of worshiping your name and hearing from your word. So speak, Lord, your servants here. Stand up in me now and grant unto me preaching power. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou dost do. In the matchless, marvelous, majestic name of the Master, we pray. Amen. We give all honor to the Spirit of Christ, to my brother, my friend, the wonderful pastor of this church. Would you help me celebrate your pastor, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, tonight? We thank God for him, for this wonderful pastoral staff that has greeted me with such warmth and joy to all of the leaders and the disciples of this, the Alfred Street Baptist Church, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord our God is good, and he is worthy to be praised. Your pastor told me last week when we talked, he said, now we're in an hour service. And I said, well, that's cool in the gang, because what we're doing this summer is called Summer Breeze at my church. You know, y'all ain't been saved that long. Makes me feel fine, <laughs> blowing through the jasmine in my mind. Yeah, y'all ain't that saved. And so our services all summer are an hour long. So I was like, man, you ain't said nothing to me. I'm in an hour long flow already. So I ain't got a whole lot of introduction because I ain't got a whole lot of time for that. Let's just get right to the word because that's because I got the clock right in front of me right here. Amen. But I want to thank him for the invitation. Alfred Street has a special place in my heart. Uh, I've been preaching here since Dr. John O. Peterson used to run revival for him years ago and so i'm honored to be here with these brothers who have sung such a wonderful fit on us this afternoon if you have your bibles or a copy of the word of the lord would you turn to luke's gospel in the 22nd chapter if you would not mind standing with me to honor the reading of God's word. Mr. Soundman, I don't need anything in the house, but can I get a little more in the monitors? Y'all working me this weekend four times. I need all the help I can get. So if I can just get a little bit more in those monitors, I would be wonderfully gracious unto you. Luke chapter 22, beginning at verse 31, you'll find these words from the lips of our Lord. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked for you that he might sift you as we. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brothers. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of our God. I want to preach this Saturday afternoon or evening, as the Spirit shall guide with this thought in our minds, I've got too much to lose. I've got too much to lose. I read an article recently on the challenges and even the dangers of pastoring a millennial generation. I pastor a church where the median age is now 32 and the average age of the joiner is 29. And in that setting and context, this article suggests, and I agree, that what has developed in the modern day church is a theology of selfishness and individualism, where everybody's coming to church and while you're being admonished to touch your neighbor, you really don't care much about your neighbor. We're living in a day of theology that is all about, I come to church to get mine, you better get yours to the extent that we have lost the accountability and the responsibility of communal concern. 
We have lost now what is a responsibility to be my brother and my sister's keeper. Now I get mine, and you better do the best to try to get whatever you can. But when you read this text and when you understand the very nature of how God did everything, God, right from the beginning of creation, suggested to us through the manner in which he created that everything is interconnected and related. God does things by relationship, by interconnectedness, by community. And Jesus, once again, in this particular passage, gives us another example of the responsibility of community. Now, I know from a reading of it, you would think that this is just Jesus simply giving Simon Peter a warning that the devil is coming after him. If you were to only do a cursory reading of this story, you might walk away thinking that this was just Jesus kind of giving a forewarning and a preview to Simon Peter that the devil wants to take him out. But when you put the text in the context of the text, you will discover that Jesus is up to something much bigger. In the context of the text, they are sitting around what we call the Lord's table. They have been inside the upper room in the Lord's Supper, this supper that represents community, this supper that represents communion, this supper that represents oneness. And if you were to read the verses prior to the one that I read you, they are in a discussion void of Jesus about who's got next. Read it when you get a chance. They know that Jesus is on his way out. They know that Jesus is about to take leave of them. And they're all wondering who's going to be the number one stunner, who's going to be the top dog, who's going to be the person in charge. After all, Jesus has not put in a succession plan. After all, Jesus has not hired an apprentice. Nobody knows who's got next. And as often happens, whenever your priority is power, you always cancel community. Whenever your priority is who's in charge, you will always find yourself diluting your responsibility for your assignment. Jesus peeps what they are doing and begins to warn them about not being like the Pharisees, not being like the Gentiles who lord authority over them, but they are so busy trying to figure out who's going to be the power that they don't even hear what Jesus is saying. Don't miss it. They are sitting around the table that represents community. They are sitting around the table that represents unity. They are sitting around the table that represents oneness. But their argument has the potential to cancel their community. So Jesus takes this opportunity to put out a warning about what they're doing around the table. And he says, Simon, Simon, Satan is after you to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Now, you're quiet because it doesn't sound like I said much, but if you were to read this in the original Greek Koinonia text, you would discover that when Jesus uses the word you, he uses two different Greek words. He uses a singular and a plural. Here's what Jesus really said. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as we, I'm from Florida, I'm country. Y'all yeah, say you all, I understand. He said, Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as we, watch it, but I've prayed for you. Come back, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as we, but I prayed for you. This side not happy. Y'all ain't got long to get on. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all to sift all of you as wheat. But I didn't pray for all of you. I only pray for you. 
Now, I know I'm in a smart congregation, so the question has to be asked, if Satan's after everybody, why does Jesus only pray for one somebody? I had to ask the question, if Satan is after y'all, then why is Jesus only praying for you? And the Holy Spirit said to me, the reason he's praying for him is because he named him the rock. He's the one that's the strong one. He's the one that's the powerful one. He's the one that's got more sense than everybody else. And Jesus says, Simon, I'm praying for you because when the devil comes after y'all, you will be the one to get up first. And after you get it up. I need you to go back and get everybody else who couldn't get up as quick as you did. He says, Simon, you've got to keep it together. Watch this, because if the devil gets you, he gets y'all. So I need you to get yourself together because you've got too much to lose. Because if he gets you, he'll mess up everything. And that's my Saturday night word to some husband, to some father, to some man, to some leader, that the devil is after everybody that is under your accountability. But Jesus is holding you responsible for getting yourself together and covering everybody else. Come on, I feel like preaching a little bit. I speak this word not only to men, but there are women who have responsibilities. There are women who are leaders. There are women uh, who are employers and entrepreneurs and raising children. And you need to know tonight, if there is anybody in the purview of your influence, the devil tries to take you out so he can take y'all out. Because if he gets you, he will get y'all. But I dare you to look at somebody and tell them I have too much to lose. I cannot let the devil have my family. I cannot let him have my ministry. I cannot let him have my church. I cannot let him have my friendships. And I'm going to get myself together so that he can't take down all of us. Very quickly, let me show you three things in the text that will help you, Simon and Simone. <laughs> that was cute, wasn't it? It's going to help you get yourself together when the devil comes after y'all. Here's the first thing the text tells to teach us. Don't allow your old person to mess up your new purpose. Yeah, now, y'all might shut down on me right here at the beginning. Um, um, I don't care how, how long you've been saved. I don't care how many scriptures you know. You can know Hebrew, you can know Greek, you can have great systematic theology, you can have been in church for four generations, there is an old you. I knew you'd shut down on me because I pastor your cousins. They shut down on me too. I'm, I, you can read the Bible. You can sing Onward Christian Soldiers. You can sing every hymn in the hymnal. But there is an old you. And here is the struggle that we have. When I got saved, my old you didn't disappear. My old you is simply brought under subjection to my new you. But the challenge is my old you knows tricks my new you doesn't know. There is in all of us some stuff we still like that we shouldn't like. That's the nature of temptation. Temptation suggests that there's something put in front of you that gives you the option to say yes when you should say no. And the thing about the devil is he customizes temptation so that he doesn't put in front of you what doesn't make you weak. That's why you have to be careful how you talk about other people's situation because the only reason you don't have that situation is because that's not your weakness okay I got I got I got to go I got to go Je Jesus trips me out because Jesus does something that contradicts his own commandments watch him he says Simon Simon stop right there got a problem Simon Simon got a problem got a problem um let me help you 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 remember when when Jesus took a survey and said who do men who do people say that I the son of man am he said, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. 
Jesus said, well, that's cool, but who do you say that I am? Y'all remember you spoke up and said, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Remember Jesus says, he said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but such as is my father in heaven. In one of the versions he says, and I say unto you, you shall no longer be called Simon. Y'all still not happy over here. And watch it. You shall no longer be called Simon. You shall be called Petros. I got a problem because now Jesus in this story calls him by the very name he said don't call him by. I don't know if Jesus has just forgotten or if he's got some kind of amnesia, but he's the one who said don't call him Simon. And then he turns around and calls him by the very name he said don't call him by. I said, Jesus, I need help because I'm going to Alfred Street. There's some of the smartest people on the planet, so I need to know why would you call him by the name you said don't call. You said call him Peter because Peter means rock. Peter represents the person that can hear divine revelation. Peter represents the person who has spiritual insight. And Jesus said, that's the point. I don't need to talk to Peter. I need to talk to Simon because I need Peter to know I don't care how strong he is, there's still some Simon left in him. And you can sit and look cute tonight if you want, but there is some Simon left in you. If somebody catches you on the wrong day at the wrong time and says the wrong thing, there's some Simon in you. Oh, I know I'm on it tonight that the devil has a way of trying to push your simonic buttons, preach bishop. He has a way of trying to get under your simonic skin. But here's the good news of the text. Jesus is praying for the Simon in you. Boy, y'all don't know when to shout. Do you know why that should have blessed you? Because people put your Simon on Facebook. People put your Simon on Instagram. People put your Simon in the blogs. But you ought to be glad you serve a Savior who knows you're going to mess up and does not disqualify you, does not kick you out, but he prays you through the weak moments of your journey. And somebody ought to Rejoice that the only reason I didn't cuss them out is because Jesus was praying for me. The only reason I didn't go back to my old ways is because Jesus was praying. He's praying for me. Don't let your old person mess up your new purpose. Simon, Simone, be careful. Let's not keep you too long. Here's the second thing text tells teach us. You're really not going to like this. Let me do a Howard John. Ooh, wee, this is going to be good. <laughs> y'all tell him I did it. I'm going to tell him y'all lied. Um, there are moments where God huh, will give divine permission for satanic purposes. Y'all didn't like that. Um, there are moments. Yes, what well, God will give. <laughs> okay, come here. I got to prove it to you from the Bible. Job chapter 1. The sons and the daughters came in the presence of God, and Satan came amongst them. Uh, I, 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 can I pull over if I promise to keep the motor running? Because what that suggests is you can never come together in a holy moment without satanic presence. Just look straight ahead. Don't look to your right or your left. Don't look to your right. Or your left. Satan is always in the midst. But, so y'all know the story. And uh, God says, Satan, where have you been? He said, I've been hither and thither, to, the, to and fro. He didn't say it like that. That's McKissick translation. Here and there, hither and thither, to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. And God said, oh, you, you don't know anybody? Yeah. And Satan said, I don't have anybody. God says, have you ever considered... My servant, Job, he's faithful, he's committed, he has integrity. And, and Satan says, yeah, but you got a hedge around him. I promise it's the last time I'm going to pull over and keep the motor running. Um, 
The very words that Satan uses suggest something we ought to celebrate. The only way Satan would know there's a hedge is if he's been trying to get to Job but can't get to it. See, we spend so much time whining over what the devil does to us when we ought to be celebrating the times he came after us and you never found out about it because when he came, God had you. Pro God, help me in here tonight. So, so God says, God says, God says, God says, hold on, y'all got to sit down. Now, y'all can shout when I'm done, but y'all can't take up my time shouting. Um, so, so God says, I'm putting him on the betting table. Have your way with a few restrictions. Don't miss that. God gave the devil permission to mess with Job. And you see it again right in this text, but it's a shout. Watch it. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked. The whole bottom floor not happy. I'm going to the balcony. <laughs> Simon, Simon, Satan has asked. Y'all know. He cannot just show up. He cannot bully his way in. God help me tonight. The only way he gets in your life is if he got a permission slip from my desk. And if I gave him permission, it's because I've already equipped you with everything you need to get the victory. There isn't one struggle you can have in your life that God hadn't already got you ready for. So anything that shows up in your life, you need to face it knowing God gave the devil a yes and God gave me the power to get the victory. Woo, y'all are quiet. He, he, he has to ask. There's nothing the devil can do that doesn't come through. Now, now, I'm not up here tonight to debate theodicy. I don't know why. God allows certain things to happen in his world. I'm not deep enough to give you that answer. I don't know why murder and gangs and molestation and child pornography and oppression and injustice and sexism and racism and ageism and all of those. I don't know why they happen. I don't have the answer to that, but I know this. The devil always has to play on the playground of God's sovereignty. Talk, boy, that no matter what the devil does, God will only let him go so far. And instead of us always trying to answer why God is letting something happen, why don't we learn to rest in the reality that no matter what happens, God will see me through it because he's given me enough faith to handle anything that I'm, I wish I had a witness tonight that can say, whatever the devil brings my way God has already equipped me can I prove it to you from the text Simon Simon Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as wheat but I pray for you watch it I pray for you that your faith not fail you missed it right there um, he said Simon what I'm praying for watch this is the faith I've taught you don't fail you when the battle comes. Simon, the devil will try so hard to make you forget what you already know. So my prayer is when it gets rough, that your faith will stand up and you'll remember what you are in it. That's why your coming to church and small groups is so important because that's where you're getting your faith strengthened so that when the devil comes your way, he ain't after your money, he doesn't need it. He ain't after your family, he don't want it. He ain't after your job, he's after your faith because if he can get your faith, he'll get your worship. And if he gets your worship, he'll get you. And your prayer every day, Ought not be give me a new house, give me a new car, let me find a boo, help me find a bay. You ought to say, God, let my faith stay strong. When the battle starts raging, let my faith stand up. When the devil is on my heels, let my faith hey, stand up. 
My, 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 my boy, Dr. Jerry Carter, help me with this. He helped me with this because that, that phrase there, uh, faith not fail. Hey, Wes, uh, faith not fail. Uh, it's eklipo in the Greek. Eklipo is the Greek word where we get the English word eclipse. You do know what an eclipse is. An eclipse, God help me this afternoon, is when the moon <laughs> shows up and blocks the sun. It doesn't erase the sun. It doesn't push out the sun. It just gets in front of the sun so you don't get the effects of the sun. Come here. What Jesus said is when I pray for you, it ain't nothing but an eclipse. And the power and grace of my moon blocks the sun of the devil's intent. Do you know how you survived some stuff? God blocked it. Do you know how you made it through some struggles? God blocked it. Do you know how you didn't lose your mind in the midst of that unemployment? God blocked it. I wish I had somebody tonight who could just put your hands up and say, God, thank you that when Jesus prayed for me, you brought the eclipse that blocked the devils in. I gotta go. Gotta go. Try to tell you two things so far. Don't let your old person mess up your new purpose. I don't care how much Peter you are, there's some Simon left in you. Uh, number two, that God will give divine permission for demonic design, but understand that he's already equipped you with everything you need to get the victory. But I got to do it one time since he's here. Ooh-wee. <laughs> this last one, and I'm done. God provides the answer before Satan ever presents the problem. Church folk don't know when to shout. God uh, provides the answer before the devil ever presents. It's so simple. You're going to miss it in the text. Can I show it? It's simple. It's one word. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all that he might sift y'all as we. But I prayed for you that your faith not fail. Here it is. And when? Not if. Not I hope. Not suppose. Y'all didn't get it. But when you return, y'all didn't get it. He said, the devil is coming to get you. But I need you to know before he shows up that I've already told you you're going to bounce back. Isn't that good news tonight? Now, don't miss this. Scholars suggest that what, the, what Jesus is talking to him about is when he goes and betray and uh, uh, three times denies Jesus. That ain't happened yet. So what the devil wants to do is still in the future. But Jesus prophesies the deliverance in the present before the future ever shows up. I just helped somebody that before your problem ever shows up, Jesus has already said when you return. Before your problem ever gets in your life, he's already said when you return. This is going to be the craziest shout of 2017, but I want somebody to shout real quick over a problem that hasn't even shown up yet because he's already given you the answer come on shout like you know you're coming out shout like you know you already got the victory shout like the devil cannot defeat you now high five somebody tell them when you come out when you get your family back when you open up that business when you get healed when you get your joy you ought to shout right now because Jesus has already declared that what's coming cannot take you and when you come back, go get your brothers, which means you ain't qualified to deliver nobody until you've come out of some stuff. You ain't qualified to minister because you went to school. You ain't qualified to minister because you know Greek. You ain't qualified to minister because you educated. But when you go through some stuff and the Lord brings you out of some stuff, that's when you're qualified to help somebody. So I got to get out of here. My time is up. But is there anybody in here tonight who knows you're qualified because you've been through something? You're 
qualified because you've been delivered. You're qualified because you've been set free. You're qualified because you got the victory. Go to shake somebody's hand and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm qualified because the Lord delivered me. Come on, man, let's roll. I'm qualified because the Lord brought me out. I'm qualified because the Lord made a way for me. I'm qualified because the Lord gave me victory. Good night, Alfred Street. May the Lord God bless you real good. But is there anybody in here who can help me close this sermon? Stand on your feet. If you're going to get your family, stand on your feet. If you're going to get your children, stand on your feet. If you're going to get your brothers, stand on your feet. If you're going to get your sisters, and here's how I'm going to do it, because I'm qualified. How did you get qualified? Through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. T'was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. High five your neighbor for the last time, and tell them, neighbor, the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will bring you out. The Lord will make a way. The Lord will give you the victory. The Lord will restore you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make your enemies your footstool? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Say yeah! 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 